New Zealand is home to a large number of lizard species, especially for a place so far away from the tropics. Although these lizards are only from two particular families, over 100 species of lizards have been recognized. But the most unique reptile found in New Zealand is the tuatara. Despite its appearance, this animal is not a lizard, but is actually the last living species of a separate lineage of reptiles. To understand why the tuatara is not a lizard, we need to look at an animal from over 300 million years ago, long before the time of the dinosaurs. The Carboniferous period was a time before many of the vertebrate animals that we're familiar with existed, including mammals and birds. Even the flowering plants that are among the most abundant plants today had not yet evolved. The landscape was dominated by giant ferns and club mosses, many of which grew to be the size of trees. During the later part of this time period, a reptile named Hylonomus laeli roamed what is now Nova Scotia, Canada. Hylonomus is among the earliest true reptiles and resembled a modern lizard. This means that the body shape we associate with lizards has been around at least as long as reptiles as a whole. Lizards in the Tuatara have merely retained this early appearance, though obviously differing in subtle ways. The Tuatara is a member of a lineage called Rhynchocephalia. Rhynchocephalia is an older group than the group that the lizards belong to called Squamata, but they are more closely related to each other than they are to the other reptile lineages. It's also worth noting that snakes and a lesser known group of burrowing reptiles called the Amphisbaneans are also part of the Squamata because they evolved directly from lizards. The Rhynchocephalians first appeared in the Triassic period, around 240 million years ago. This was about 10 million years before the earliest dinosaurs first appeared. The Rhynchocephalians were most abundant throughout the Triassic and Jurassic periods, but declined in number of species during the Cretaceous, the period that ended 66 million years ago with the asteroid that struck Earth and killed most of the dinosaurs. During this time frame, Rhynchocephalians often filled the same roles in nature that lizards fill today. It was once believed that this group began to disappear due to competition with lizards and mammals. However, it has been suggested that changes in the climate due to the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea may have contributed to the decline of the Rhynchocephalians. As time went on and the continents drifted to where they are today, the lineage dwindled in number. Eventually they were restricted to New Zealand, though it is not known why they survived there. Fossils resembling the Tuatara dated to 19 to 16 million years ago are found on New Zealand's South Island, but the actual Tuatara appeared much more recently, within the last 100,000 years. New Zealand was one of the last habitable places on Earth where man settled. Polynesian people who would later become known as New Zealand's native Maori people settled the island somewhere between 1250 and 1300 AD. To put that time span into perspective, the last of the medieval crusades was occurring around the time that man finally reached New Zealand. Unique animals besides the Tuatara existed in New Zealand at that time, such as the giant wingless moa who were the island's dominant herbivores, along with Host's eagle, the largest eagle to have ever lived. These animals were driven to extinction well before Europeans arrived on the islands. The Tuatara also disappeared from the New Zealand mainland, but managed to survive on several small offshore islands. In 1842, Ernst Dieffenbach, one of the first scientists to work in New Zealand, learned of the Tuatara's existence from the Maori, thinking it to be a large lizard. He found a Tuatara on a small island just a few days before he was to leave the colony. Dieffenbach gathered from the Maori that the Tuatara had been more common in the past. He postulated that the hunting of Tuatara for food and the introduction of pigs to its habitats caused its numbers to dwindle. The individual obtained by Dieffenbach was preserved and presented to the British Museum. Later, Tuatara specimens attracted the attention of the famous scientist Richard Owen. Owen noticed some peculiarities in the skull and vertebra of the Tuatara, which eventually led to the scientist Albert Gunther formally describing the Tuatara. Gunther was the first to propose that the Tuatara deserved to be classified into a separate group from lizards based on its unique anatomical features. One unique anatomical feature is its teeth, which are not separate teeth, but extensions of its jawbone. These cannot be replaced, so as the Tuatara's teeth wear down, it switches from its usual diet of frogs, lizards, bird eggs, and insects to softer prey, such as worms and slugs. 
The Tuatara also has a very well-developed parietal eye. The parietal eye is a light-detecting third eye on the top of its head, though it is only visible in juveniles. It is possibly used for detecting night and day cycles and seasonal changes, but it is not known for sure. But perhaps the most unique aspect of the Tuatara's anatomy are two holes on each side of its skull. All modern reptiles are descended from reptiles that possess two of these holes, called temporal fenestri. But in all lineages except Tuatara, one or both of the fenestri have been lost over time. The purpose of these holes is unknown, but they may have allowed for jaw muscles to expand and become stronger. Despite the Tuatara retaining some primitive features and being the last of its kind, it is not a perfect representative of its lineage. Because it is found in the colder temperatures of New Zealand, the Tuatara is better adapted to survive under such conditions than its ancestors, who lived during a time when the Earth was much warmer. As a result, the Tuatara is capable of surviving in temperatures that would be lethal to other reptiles and is primarily active at night. Possibly as a result of its slow metabolism and lower body temperature, the Tuatara can live to be over a hundred. It also grows slowly and doesn't reach sexual maturity until it reaches 10 to 20 years old. Because the Tuatara takes so long to reproduce, it is critical to keep its habitats free of introduced pests such as cats and rats who threaten the reptile. Though the Tuatara has been reintroduced to the New Zealand mainland, it is only present in the heavily monitored Zealandia Wildlife Sanctuary, which is surrounded by a fence designed to keep out pest animals. Albert Gunter predicted that the Tuatara had a real possibility of going extinct, due to its rarity at the time. 150 years later, thanks to strong conservation efforts, that prediction has yet to come true. If you like this video and want to see more like it, consider subscribing, and thank you very much for watching.